What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Pastors Game 2 franchise. This is Madden 24, and I want to apologize. For some of you who were trying to jump in on the live that we were trying to do on Monday, on the uh, first day we got the game, we had a bunch of issues. The goal of that particular live was for us to kind of come away with the team that we were going to run our franchise with. And, you know, we ran into a bunch of problems. We did do a little bit of review for some of you who went and checked that out. We're going to do a similar thing today, but this time I want to look at the four teams that I think uh, I am comfortable with starting a franchise with. And and again, we're going to we're going to do this one more time. But this time I want you guys, uh, for those of you who are listening, I want you guys to vote on which team we do. I, I have uh, maybe a team that I would pick cause I'm, uh, you know, I have my team, but I, I kind of want to get what you guys would like to have happen. And it's four interesting teams. So um, yeah, so I'm cool with any of them. So let's do it. The, the goal of this video is to take a look at these four teams and to make a decision. So I've looked at these teams. I wanna share with you what I've seen um, regarding these teams. And um, and then I want you guys to vote. I'm looking forward to getting it in. You can vote just by jumping into the comment section and leaving the name of the team that you think we should run with. Let's try to stay with these four teams that we're going to look at. Right. Uh, so I just started a franchise. It doesn't matter. I grabbed the Rams. It, it didn't matter. I just wanted to be able to get in and look at some of the salary stuff, which I wasn't able to do um without jumping into a franchise so uh i just need to jump in and do that but here's what we're going to do we're going to look at the team itself we're going to look at you know the strengths of the team um really what we're trying to do as we make a decision about what team we want to do it's not about how good the team is it's it's how interesting the team would be to rebuild and that has to do a little bit <clears throat> with the challenge that the team will represent, right? And so we'll talk about some of that. Uh, it's gonna have something to do with drafts and 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 what, what building is gonna look like. Is it gonna be through the draft? Is it gonna be through the free agency? We're gonna look at some cap space stuff uh, related to that. Uh, and if I'm honest with you, there's a part of me that, that the clout of the team kind of matters. So is there fans of this team that would wanna see this uh, rebuilt because we were trying to build um, our channel as well. So all of those things will factor into it, and then we'll we'll take it. We'll take a look at each one of the teams and give a franchise rebuild team grade uh, to determine. You know, well, we'll just grade it. I'll grade it based on my my scale. But again, that grade is based on all those things I mentioned, like the challenge, how interesting it would be. You know, does the team have some cloud, have some fans that would join and all of that. So the first team we're going to look at is the uh, Indianapolis Colts. Take a look at the Indianapolis Colts. This is in no particular order. Um, doesn't really matter to me. Uh, we're just looking at the Colts because they're the first thing on my list here. Uh, but the Indianapolis Colts was, was probably the most interesting about this team is Anthony Richardson. Now, he seems to be an amazing prospect. 91 speed, 92 acceleration. Looks like he's a um, excellent prospect for, for as a scrambling quarterback. 95 throw power, which is crazy. And But the deep accuracy is not that great. Um, looking at... Honestly, looking at... Um, Minshew, he's got the 85 and 85. He feels like he might be a little bit safer. Uh, but Anthony Richardson is the key. But here's the thing about Anthony Richardson, man. He's only a 70 overall. Like, it's not like he's this amazing um, killer prospect. Like, you know, he's 70 overall. But still, that makes it kind of cool to be able to build with him. So I, I say that's a plus for for this particular franchise. It's it's cool to, to have a quarterback. It's a little bit of a downer because you don't draft a quarterback, but it could be interesting to run uh, with, this, with this particular team. Jonathan Taylor is 
interesting as well. I know real life, he's holding out, asked for a trade. There's a whole thing in Indiana, uh, Indianapolis about Jonathan Taylor, uh, which means that he could be tradable, right? And it, if we were to trade him, it would match real life because he's asked already to be traded. And looking at the rest of the running backs here, like these aren't people we're going to go to war with long term. So we could trade Jonathan Taylor and potentially get uh, some interesting draft picks and get closer to rebuilding uh, just by virtue of trading Jonathan Taylor. We struggle a little bit with the run. Uh, maybe King and Drake is a decent filler for a year. Uh, and then we get a young, uh, hopefully we get a young um, halfback and nail it out. So that's the idea that we're thinking about with Jonathan Taylor. We're not going to do every player. I'm just thinking about the players that I'm um, interested in. Honestly, I'm not that interested in Michael Pittman. I know he's 25 years old and this is a good prospect. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what it is about Michael Pittman that I'm not particularly interested in, but maybe it's the speed or the lack thereof. I don't know. We we'll have to see what his hands are like if we were to play with him. Isaiah McKenzie, while he's rated that way, he's only 5'8 and probably shouldn't be the number two receiver, maybe a slot receiver. Uh, has the speed and accuracy for that, so probably should be in the three spot. But I am kind of interested in Alec Pierce. 23 years old, 6'3", with 92 and 94. I like the height, I like the speed, and uh, could be a nice target for a new quarterback. You know, so I'm kind of digging kind of digging him he would probably be the number two if he's the number two Pittman's the number one that gives a nice little speed slash um hands possession kind of receiver combo that could be decent for for a young quarterback to throw to everybody else here is you know not that good uh looking at the rest of this like you know the tight end situation is not good. Most of these teams we're going to fire through because they're <laughs> the predominant uh, situation for these teams is that they're not very good. So uh, the Colts are not very good on the offensive line. Quentin Nelson is a solid player to build around. I think we could keep him for a long time. Um, not quite sure what his... Let's take a look at uh, his... Um, hold on, I'm sorry. I guess I hadn't looked at that stuff before. Oh, not edit. I want to see his contract stuff. Uh, basically, I just want to know how much, how many more years he has. How many more years do you have with us, Quentin? Stats and contracts. Um, he has, yeah, four more years left. So he's he he's gonna be a good player to build uh to build around. Uh, but the rest of the offensive line is a garbage this player right here 10 million dollars with a 77 at 30 you know this is sort this is the sort of stuff that uh is not helping the Colts right here ryan kelly he's gonna have to go and then look right right guard yeah so the offensive line has some work to do 16 million for a 27 year old at 82 overall again you know could use some work the defense is okay for the Colts. um Quiddy Pay, I don't know, man. We'll see. Left end, um, I don't know. Not not in love with him, but is an okay player to fill in for the right now. Um, the right end is okay too, um, but I, I what this is what makes it work for them. The DeForest Buckner and Grover Stewart, both of those players actually give the Colts. Um, a chance for us to kind of maybe get by with our defensive line for a year or two uh, as we try to do that. And so they're both getting older, 29 years old. And um, so they're definitely just to get us to the next thing. Shaquille Leonard's getting older, but I really like, I really like him. And then Cam McGrown, I like him as a player too. His speed has dropped a little bit last, from last year, but um, I like him in there. Home, homegrown cat right there too I know he grew up in Indianapolis and uh yeah so I kind of like him I'm kind of I'm kind of interested in playing with Cam just because uh, you know I'm kind of near him uh okay and then um middle linebackers not good the rest of the the rest of this is not that good Kenny Moore we just added to this team 
Uh, but beyond Kenny, it's struggle bus on the cornerback situation uh, and in the safeties. So this is a team that, you know, could be it could be tough uh, to do much with them. Looking at the draft picks, they have a, your standard draft. Nothing special about their drafts. Uh, they do have all their picks for the year coming up, and that's good. Um, I do think, though, that we have a few tradable stars for the Colts. That can make it interesting. Uh, let's take a look at the, the salary cap real quick. Um, yeah, there's a few tradable stars. Particularly what I'm interested in is uh, looking at what the savings would be in relation and then what the penalty would be. So if you've never kind of paid attention to this, if you cut or trade a player, then I believe the way it works is you do get this savings but you also get this penalty. And so if the penalty is more than the savings, then you're actually losing money to cut or trade this player. So if we go to the Colts, uh, the Colts have a few players that I think are tradable players, not Quentin Nelson. That would be a net negative. Uh, but Jonathan Taylor is one of those players that we could, um, that we could trade and get money from he's 4.3 million dollars savings with 810 thousand uh penalty so if we were to trade him you know we'd be winning uh on that trade and as a 24 year old i think he's our most tradable piece and could really give us uh something back uh even shaquille leonard is tradable um we'd have to see how much people love his contract as a 28 year old he's probably right at his peak and so uh it's now or never potentially uh, for him. Same thing here with DeForest Buckner, 29 years old, $14 million savings, $5 million penalty. There's room to make a little money there and then potentially go after um, some free agency targets. Uh, Grover Stewart, another player, 29. Again, savings and penalty I feel like he could be so we've got some players here like if we look at some of our best players there is an opportunity here's kenny moore you could save get get seven million back coming from him uh but yeah if we were to look at that uh i think we really have an opportunity to um uh, to make a few moves and maybe get ourselves in position with some free agency. Now, again, these are some of our best players, though. So you're losing some of your best players in order to get other players. And so it may not be worth it to do it, but the option is there. And so that makes it pretty interesting to me anyway. All right. So um, also $21.5 million cap space. Decent. That's room for us to kind of make some decisions with. So they've done OK with that. So that's the Colts. The Colts, um, they're in the AFC. The AFC is a tough division. And we'll see a couple teams in the AFC. This is one of them uh, that that really makes it a little bit tougher. Um, you've got you've got, you know, you got Justin Herbert, you got. Patrick Mahomes, you got uh, Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow. You got uh, who else? You got over there. You it's a it's a ton of teams in the, in, in the ASC. Oh yeah, you got uh, Baltimore. Um, lots of teams. Jackson, no Jackson was the NFC, but lots of teams in the NFC uh, in the AFC to to worry about. So, um, so I think that makes them a little bit harder. You have to be good, but then you have to be really good because those are the teams you're going to face early on in the playoffs that you may not be able to uh, get beyond. All right, so here's a recap. Here's a recap for the Colts. The Colts are, this is what we just talked about. Colts have a young quarterback to build with, potentially young receiver to build with as well. Decent defense to start, a few tradable stars, a challenge for the AFC. Uh, I didn't mention this, but the conference is not super strong. They're in a conference with the Houston Texans. Jacksonville might be pretty strong. And I think who else, who else is in their conference? Um, Houston, Jacksonville. Let's see, I think they're the NFC. Let me see if I can take a look real quick. Uh, North. Hold on. Let me look. What? Yeah, what is there? Oh, the AFC. I'm tripping. I'm looking at NFC. 
uh coast jack uh, titans uh titans is middle ground so um you know not super strong but could be a little bit of a challenge and then the salary cap has some flex so for me i think this get makes the coast a franchise rebuild team grade you know fun opportunity and all that jazz a b um and you guys can grade it however way you like but for me i have it at a b okay so let's look at the second team the second team is going to be it's going to be the arizona cardinals arizona cardinals probably one of the worst uh definitely one of the worst rosters this year in arizona you have this first thing you have it all starts with the quarterback right first thing you have is this crazy contract with uh <laughs> with kylo murray we'll look at it more in depth um once we get to the cap space part but Kyler Murray has 16 you see the penalty there 69.9 million dollars are y'all kidding me anyway and he's not that good I'm not sure that I want to you know again go to war with Kyler Murray uh and beyond him you know there's really no one so this is probably a dynamic I I don't know that this is a tradable contract I think this this the situation um is interesting because it feels like we need to keep him on the field but if he's not performing i wouldn't keep him on the field um i don't know he creates an interesting scenario for us to deal with could be some interesting storylines to come uh, out of that outside of kyla murray the entire offense needs an overhaul let's look at it James Conner's the best person that they have, 77 overall. Um, no fullback. Marquise Brown, an interesting prospect, a B-level receiver, though. Like, he's not your number one guy that you're going to go to in a pinch. Like, he's he's a number two. He's maybe. He's maybe a number two. He's going to thrive better if Rondell Moore, who's also a shorter receiver, uh, can do something. Zach Pascal, if he can come up and get a little bit better, his height could really help someone like Marquise, but I don't think you're going to go far with two shorter route receivers, at least not the way that uh, I like to play. Tight end Zach Ertz, he's okay, you know, but again, the entire offense just needs help. Like, there's no really good um, help on the offense. So, you know, that's that. The defense also <laughs> the entire defense also needs help look at this 67 67 um you got uh 69 and 68 then the linebackers 71 76 71 i mean man tough tough there's some there's some young prospects in there cameron thomas is a young prospect could be interesting not my type of player though uh, he, this guy is closer to it, but he's 29. Um, yeah, these aren't even, I, I guess, Zavin, Ka, uh, Zavin Callen, Collins. He seems like an interesting prospect. Um, maybe Kazir White is. And so there's a few players that maybe, you know, is interesting. Uh, but this is interesting. Oh, yeah. Uh, I looked at this the last time. Yeah. Owen Popo, I really want to. Now, this is something I'm super interested in. I want to see if we can make this guy beast mode. So, if we go to Cardinals, uh, he'll be a big reason for that. And you guys, of course, if you like the Cardinals. Um, but check him out, man. What I like 93, 95 speed. I think he's a coverage, a coverage uh, linebacker. He's in Auburn, and I'm an Auburn guy. Um, so, I like all of that. But yeah, the defense, the going to the cornerbacks, I mean, the defense is struggling. We do have Buda Baker. This one player, player superstar, 27 years old, nice, uh, nice guy. And then Isaiah Simmons is a nice player to do something with. You know, maybe we move him to free safety. Maybe we find a way to put him into the linebacker core. But he does give us a little something to mess with. Uh, as a really flexible kind of player that can cover and and um, and can tackle 
but this would be a definitely a challenging rebuild because we're starting from um well we're starting from a place where everybody and everything needs help so yeah even the kickers like 79 69 it's crazy um Again, this is the NFC team. And so since it's not in the AFC, it's potential that you can get a little more wins, maybe maybe get some um, some impact, uh, excuse me, get some get some momentum going. Uh, but Arizona, man, whoo, uh, I think they're going to be tough, um, a tough rebuild. Could take a two, could take several years to get them to a Super Bowl caliber team. Um Looking at the team salaries, let's take a quick look here. Uh, so they have twenty-five million dollars in cap space. That's good. Oh no, that's sorry, that's the Rams. Let's go to the Cardinals. Looking at the wrong thing. We'll, we'll look at them in a minute. Okay, so the Cardinals have twenty-one million dollars in cap space. Um, and looking at the most. Look at this, Kyler Murray, two hundred and seventy-two million. That's crazy. Uh, whoever made that contract, they need they need to get over that. <laughs> That's a mess. Oh man, that is a quarter billion dollars almost. As it is, that's a quarter billion dollars. It's over a quarter billion dollars. Uh, so cl clearly he's the problem. Um, again, same thing we're looking at. Can't do anything about. Um, the left tackle. There's not a lot of room to flex with trades and 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 moving a lot of players here. Um, again, looking at what we were telling you before, the savings versus the penalty. Buda Baker is a tradable player, uh, but we might want to keep him. I mean, we might want to keep him. Um, then again, you know, maybe we make Ian Simmons a strong safety, get the money from, get the money in the trade from, uh, from, uh, for Buda Baker, maybe trade to get, get stronger somewhere else. There's some, there's some possibilities there. He's one guy, uh, savings and penalty. The rest of these are just, look, this is an overpayment probably, um, I don't know. Young guy, he's 22, so it depends on what happens with him, how he progresses. Marquise Brown would be a guy that we would trade, and I'd be open to trading Marquise. I don't need Marquise. I'm not a big fan. Um, definitely not my number one, number two. Don't want to pay 15 million for Marquise Brown. Uh, I think he's a solid player. I think he's a, a speedster, but I'd be willing to move on from Marquise and maybe find something else. Um, definitely, especially if you know the draft it presents something so anyway so there's a few opportunities to make some changes but not a ton so that's what's going on with with the uh with the cap space and i think you'd have to rebuild this team mostly through the draft actually i think you could do a little bit of both you could do a little bit from the phrase a little bit from the draft uh with these with these players um the last thing, which is probably the most important thing for the Cardinals, is the draft picks. Cardinals are, are while they have the a, a pretty big challenge to um, to rebuild, they've got two number ones, and one of them belongs to Houston. Uh, and who thinks Houston's going to be amazing? Nobody. So this is probably going to be a high pick regardless of where we land. So two number ones, a number two, and then three number threes, a number four, and two number fives. He's got a ton of picks this year. And so that makes, man, that makes them, that takes this whole thing up because we do need to add players. And here's where we'll have an opportunity to either add or potentially trade maybe a, a pick or something if we wanted to do that to do that for a key player uh we have some really strong options here that i really um i really like um yeah i really like that so that is the that's the arizona cardinals and my particular grade for the cardinals uh, actually let's let's uh Let's get back to it. So here's a review for the Cardinals. Crazy quarterback contract in Kyler Murray. Entire offense and defense needs rehauling. 
uh, definitely a challenging rebuild. Uh, we're going to lose a lot of games probably in the first season. The team is just not good. NFC, we might be able to get a little bit better though. So <laughs> for my morale, we might be a little bit better. Uh, but the salary cap has a little room. We talked about that with being able to trade some players or release some players and maybe get some more salary cap space. Um, there's my personal interest in Owen Papo. I think that's how you say his name. Papo? Papo? I don't know. But this is the big one. The nice draft potential. Two first rounders, three third rounders, and it was two fifth rounders as well that made that uh, interesting. So I'm giving this franchise rebuild team grade an A uh, just because I think it can get interesting very quickly, uh, especially with those draft picks. The draft picks pretty much take it over the over the top now the, the bad thing about the cardinals is uh with the cloud the Colts do have some fans cardinals don't have as many fans and so um that's a negative for them too but um i don't know i think the are uh, arizona cardinals are a very interesting um team to uh to consider okay so the next team we're going to look at is the las vegas raiders if you know me, you know that the Raiders are my favorite team. And so I already have that going. But legitimately, the Raiders can be a very interesting, um, be an interesting franchise. Here's why. While the Raiders have some really great talent right away with Devontae Adams and with um, Josh Jacobs and who knows what's going to happen with him. Like if he decides, if he gets traded or is released, then we'll follow whatever uh whatever the um whatever happens in real life uh we'll we'll follow in our i think we'll follow i mean assuming that we're not like way past it before it happens but um if josh jacobs gets traded or something like that then we'll try to emulate that so that makes it interesting if we didn't have josh jacobs then um you know that complicates things just a little bit but even if we kept him, Devontae, Josh Jacobs, and Max Crosby, these are probably top five for their positions. Max Crosby is definitely top five. Devontae's top five receiver. Josh Jacobs is top five, I think, a top five running back uh, this year. Uh, and then you got Colton Miller, who is supposed to be good. Uh, I'm still waiting on him to be that good. So these are these highs are really, really high. But then, but then you have a medium with Marcus Peter. And then after that, it gets really, really low, uh, with one exception. So Jimmy Garoppolo, not the not the quarterback we really want to be um, going with long term. I don't trust Jimmy G. And um, regardless of what the Raiders do, he won't be. If we started with him in our franchise, he won't be a Raider for long. So that creates an opportunity for Aiden and Brian Hoyer or someone new to come in and uh, make room so immediately we could be looking at you know drafting a quarterback and uh that's always fun josh jacobs okay you got damian williams uh i'm kind of interested in uh, zamir white though if josh jacobs goes away then zamir white becomes the guy that i'm probably going to move up to the starting position and give him a shot at things I don't know about Damian Williams. I don't even need him. Um, Amir Abdullah, maybe he returns some punts or kicks. The rest of these guys can go. I'm interested in Jacobs, uh, Zamir White, um, maybe Abdullah. And uh, if we lose Josh Jacobs, then Damian Williams. Maybe maybe we go with him for a little bit. Maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe. Other than that, um, the wide receiver situation is actually kind of interesting too. So Devonte, thirty years old, um, and going to be with us for a little bit while. I I like him as a as a player. I think he's going to be obviously one of the better players for us. And I love Hunter Renfro, and I love Jacoby Myers. So this is probably the highlight of the team because even when Devonte Adams goes, uh, I like Hunter Renfro and I like Jacoby Meyer. And I think that both of those players are in good position to kind of take the place of, of um, Devontae uh, to the degree that, you know, maybe we look at trading Devontae. Uh, is there a trade package that could come together for him, uh, given that, um, you know, we can go with these two? Maybe not. We can see the savings and the penalty right here. It's probably not in our favor. Uh, but anyway, 
this is a solid solid deal and then michael meyer as a tight end is also good so the raiders have good targets on offense for a quarterback to uh to come into and then they have a good running back and so all that offense feels good right away uh the thing is those are aging players and eventually you're going to have to move on and when we move on if we haven't rebuilt then um then uh we'll be rebuilding so it could be kind of a delayed rebuild with the raiders yeah could be a delayed rebuild after the raiders i mean after after the tight end and colton miller it just goes downhill uh no no one else good on the offensive line uh, no one good on the defensive line except max crosby and uh middle linebacker situation is not good divine diablo you hope will be pretty good i do like diablo and bernie um i like that they both have good speed in fact i like the speed of everyone on this uh on this middle linebacker the uh, squad these are the sort of players i do like to try to build a defense around so but uh chandler jones and and uh wilson are both players that should be on the end i think i know these are edge players and so madden has this weird thing where they have max crosby and um tyree wilson as edge players they should be ends and i'll probably move them to end which does make some room for some of these players to be moved around a bit but we don't have that many great linebackers to move around like that so our linebacker core turns out to be really weak when you move these players to the ends like they should be uh maybe you keep uh i don't know no i think they belong on the end and that's where i would that's where i would put them if i'm if i'm being real they are not um just linebacker players cornerback so the middle so the linebacker looks strong but it's not as strong as it looks uh, and then the Marcus Peters, he's decent, but again, 30 years old and just kind of a veteran. Hopefully he can bring along some of these guys. Very interested in this guy, uh, Jacorian Bennett, just because of his speed. 71 is not bad for a rookie. Um, and it could be something that um, turns into uh, turns into something special. Amika Robinson is okay, you know, but I think we'd be looking at probably parting ways with a couple of these players so that we can get, um, so we can get Jacorian a little love if we were to mess with the Raiders here. Uh, the free safety is D okay. Trevion, Trevion Merrick has traditionally been a free safety. Now he's over here in the strong safety spot. Um, and I'm very curious to see how he would do there. Um, in the past, he's been a great player, and, and he's he's one of my favorites, and so we would keep him. Uh, looking at the draft picks, we don't have a number six, but we have three number sevens, so that's okay. Other than that, everything else is is pretty standard fare. So I don't know. The Raiders kind of feel like they could win a little bit early. Again, they're in an AFC. They got to deal with Patrick Mahomes twice a year, Justin Herbert twice a year whatever happens with denver uh, with sean payton they gotta deal with that twice a year and so it gets very difficult for the raiders to um to shine in the afc west so even with the team being okay it could be very tough for us to uh to move forward team salaries uh for the raiders is um well salary hell we have $2.7 million, so we're not going to be able to make any real moves in the free agency um, unless we shed contracts, which is very hard for us to do. If we shed Josh Jacobs, we'll get $10 million, right? But that's not a ton. That just moves us to 12 and I don't know. We may not be able to re-sign and uh, get free agency from that. Uh, looking at these others, um, savings we don't get anything on max crosby but i don't think i'm moving him anyway um marcus peters we just traded for him it would seem weird to trade him immediately so i'd have to keep him just because he just got here and it wouldn't be realistic to trade him right away maybe next year but not this year i think he's just a one-year signing anyway 
Um, I would probably, I think it's too much money for Daniel Carson. 21 million for him, you know, I think, I think I'd be willing to drop Daniel Carson and pick up someone else just to, uh, uh, just to save a little, a few dollars there. So I think that's what we would be willing to do. Chandler Jones would probably keep him, especially for his age. But so they don't have well, the point in all this is they don't have a ton of of uh, players to drop off. Here's Garoppolo. He would be the biggest. We can find a new home for Jimmy Garopp Garoppolo. Maybe we um, start with him, uh, start to get him going a little bit and um maybe make him look all right and then look to trade him he's probably the best way to move this this team into some sort of free agency contention because uh, there's there's no penalty to trade him or to release him and he's got 23 million on the books so there is an opportunity there but you know we'll see um how it works so some interesting potential with the Raiders uh, so a little recap for the Raiders is that um, we have a rebuild opportunity at the quarterback for the reasons I just gave it there's every reason to trade Garoppolo or to drop Garoppolo uh, he's not the guy we're going to go long term with uh, he could really help our cap situation and um, yeah so there's, there's every reason to look at moving him which really helps our ability to make some moves as a as a raider or uh, with a raider franchise uh they've got good talent on the front end they've got max crosby tyree wilson is not one well player that's on the clock but chandler jones is on the clock uh Devontae adams is on the clock jimmy josh jacobs may not even be there um and so the the decent players that we have uh we probably have another one or two years with them so and then we don't have them and we'll have to find another way to to move things forward so that makes it a little interesting we don't have strong depth on defense uh we have defensive line uh help our middle linebacker situation needs a rebuilding and the cornerbacks have some potential but we're not quite sure how strong they're going to be uh we do have some really great targets that we talked about for the receiver and the tight end especially for a young player to grow with Hunter Renfro and uh, Jacoby Meyer are both really great targets. And then the tight end rookie this year, I think it's Michael. Um, what's his name? Yeah, Michael Mayer. Uh, he's pretty good um, as well as a rookie. So we'll see what that goes. We don't have a lot of trade candidates, but what we do have could give us some, some extra money to move around in a free agency. Uh, but this team with this cap situation where it's at, it's probably going to be a team that we build through the draft. And we don't have a ton of extra picks or anything like that. Uh, so uh, the grade for the Raiders is also a B. Um, but that is, <laughs> that is that is probably graded on the curve of a Raider fan. It's probably more like a B minus, but the Raiders are a big market and there's lots of Raider fans across the country. And uh, yeah. They could be, they could be all right. Okay, so the last, the last one we're gonna do, all right, and then we're out of here, is the team that I'm on here, and that is the Los Angeles Rams. And this is gonna be very easy, right? This is gonna be, this is gonna be easy to talk about because the Rams are garbage. They have the worst roster in the league um, without Aaron Donald and Cooper Cup. It just, it's just not good. It's not good um, at all, especially for a franchise. Matthew Stafford, 75 overall, 35 years old. The good news is that, you know, he has a crazy contract, but it could potentially come off the books if he retires. I think that's the way that works, right? If he retires, do we, does his contract stay or is that money released? I'm not, I'm not sure quite how that works. Uh, but Matthew Stafford, uh, He's got to go, but there's no one after him. So another potential opportunity for us to get a quarterback quickly. Um, I expect that he will retire, but it doesn't really matter to me because I'm probably drafting a quarterback whether he retires or not. Cam Akers, uh, you know, again, a filler, 
probably look at the draft a, a running back as well or acquire a different running back in free agency if we can. Cam Akers just is not going to be the guy for me. Although, unless we were to play with him and he ended up being really good, but I don't expect that he would be someone that I just would fall in love with. Of course, Cooper Cup, but after him, it, it's a steep drop on the wide receiver front. Cooper's 30s, kind of in the same boat as Devontae Adams could get us going for a little bit but uh at this rate though i think he's a good deal i think we could still trade uh cooper cup away uh i really do i think we could we could do that tyler higby again just a filler probably a trade target you know i think i would oh yeah want to do something else at tight end none of these other ones really make you know, make me excited. So we'd be potentially looking at the draft for tight end or free agency with that. Uh, everything else needs rebuilding. I mean, these teams, this is not good. Rod Happenstein, he's okay. Again, older guy, going to look to replace him, but he could be good for the first year or two. Uh, Aaron Donald is great on the right end, but outside of Aaron Donald, there is no one. 69, 68, 75, 69 cornerback 76 some decent speed right here maybe kobe durant and robert rochelle are players that could potentially turn into something they're pretty young players and so is travius hodges tomlinson so you have some potential here but they would need to play well um to to develop and we'd have to very intentionally seek to develop these players um, John Johnson is okay and then you have Jordan Fuller so not not the best <laughs> not the best team right there and then you're looking at draft picks and they have a number one number two number three number four number five number six no number seven for them but who cares about the seventh round pick uh, so nothing special with the draft picks and that makes them you know <sighs> You know, this is the team. This is a team that probably needs the most work right there next to um, right there next to the um, Car the Cardinals. But the Cardinals have a lot more picks to work with and could be really more exciting than the Rams in that way. But then, you know, the Rams have a crazy quarterback uh, salary, but that salary is potentially going to go away. Uh, let's take a look at the cap space for this team and see what would be the pathway to making this a better team. So looking at the team's salaries, uh, we are looking at the top players here. Matthew Stafford has the biggest salary, uh, but again, a player that is likely going to come off. Look at this $74 million penalty. Newt's utterly ridiculous uh cooper cub he's got a big contract i still think he's tradable though i think someone would take that contract and player if they were trying to win right now and cooper cup could definitely be a piece that if you need him he'd be a, you know he'd be a piece and you're basically paying to win right now so that would be the scenario that i would that i would look into i wouldn't want to trade him to a rebuilding team um, Aaron Donald. So none of these top players are good for trading away. However, Tyler Higby is absolutely 100% tradable. $6.5 million savings. You can get about $3 million with him. The cap space is at tw the cap space is at $25 million, So we're already pretty good with that, but we could make it a little bit better uh, over time with that. Outside of Higby, though. The rest of the players, they're not really tradable, but as you start to get down here, this is a guy you could just drop. Like, you don't need him. Uh, you could get a million dollars with him. 600000 here, 600000 here. Like, it's that kind of thing where a lot of these players down in this little area, as you're getting rid of them, you can take your, um, you can take your salary cap up a little bit more, I think, um, by, by dealing with that. So, um so an okay team for you know moving players and and getting better 
after that but ultimately this has got to be done the long and the hard way you got to wait for Stafford to like to be to be gone maybe make a decision about whether you're going to keep Cooper Cup or not um think through you know is Cup or Donald do they have to go in order to try to make um get a chance to get more draft picks um I don't know right so this the, the the Rams feel like the hardest team to to rebuild. Um, they they give you far less tools. It, the only way, the best way to rebuild this team will be through the free agency. You'll have to make a free agent splash, um, and probably need to make a couple splashes in order for it to happen. So um, yeah, so I think this one will be the toughest team for us to deal with if we were to go with them, which which is a good thing for a franchise. It is a good thing. Okay, so let's do a quick little recap on the Rams. Uh, the Rams after Donald Cup, after Donald and um, Aaron Donald and Cooper Cup is crickets, right? This team is just not good. Um, everything needs to be, be rebuilt. Um, there's a lot of releasable players that we're talking about that. Those are smaller contracts. So you could release a lot of small players and maybe incrementally in upgrade. So that that could be an interesting deal. No seven round pick. That's not a big deal. We'll probably need to make a free agency splash though. Um, too crazy. We talked about the crazy quarterback contract, but uh, retirement could be on the other side of that could help us. We had a couple few uh, tradable players, but very few. Probably should put very few. And then the NFC could be a, a, a place where we get a little more wins than the AFC. Overall, I would make them a B plus. It's a B plus because we really don't have a lot of tools to move forward. That makes it slightly less exciting. Uh, it's a challenge, and that that kind of goes hand in hand with that. So I have it at a B plus. Um, that's where I have it. Okay, so that's it, man. That's 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 this video. We want. Here's what I need from you guys now. I need you guys to. Um, I need you guys to um, let me know what you think. Which team should we go with? The Rams, the Cardinals, the Colts, or the Raiders? Um, I think I'm okay with going with any of the four. Um, obviously, I've thought about all four of them. So, uh, looking forward to yeah looking for what you guys think so hopefully you let me know in the comment section which way you want to go um thanks for hanging out with me i appreciate you um looking forward to this season looking forward to what we're going to do going forward we'll go through like settings and all that stuff once we pick the team but um but yeah in the meantime let's get this team picked I uh, hope you guys got, have a good rest of your day this is pastor Scan 2 god loves you so do i and i will see you when i see you Peace.